Today's video is sponsored by Che Peku. Maps are the foundation of every tabletop RPG. They tell a story all by themselves and allow your players to believe they're standing on an icy tundra, inside a crypt, or exploring a massive city. Che and Peku make incredible maps for role-playing games like D&D. Their maps work in every VTT you're using. What makes them unique is that they cover diverse themes and outlandish ideas you can't find anywhere else. Kobold breweries, coral thrones, Giant Elder Brain Skull? No matter the theme, they can create the best map for your epic adventure. A new pack of maps each week, and the ability to vote for the maps you'd like us to create. Each of our map packs comes with tons of variations. On average, we create 10 beautifully illustrated battle maps each release, but sometimes it's as many as 30. Subscribe on Patreon today. Access to the full archive of 4,000 plus maps with a $5 tier subscription. $10 tier gives you access to animated maps, and Foundry VTT modules. Click the link in the description below to start using these amazing maps in your campaign. And now what you're here for. How an ordinary ladder became the most wanted relic in all of realms. My players find themselves venturing through a mundane dungeon facing nothing spectacular. As I begin describing it, the scene unfolds. Inside lies a sparsely furnished chamber, featuring a solitary workbench strewn with wood scraps and a collection of metal spikes. Adjacent to these items stands a ladder an ordinary ladder that is nothing special. Unexpectedly, my human fighter asks me, May I take the ladder with me? I thought, well, okay, sure. It's just a ladder. What's going to happen? It's not like she could do something absurd with it. The rogue, seizing the opportunity, asks if they can put the metal spikes on the end of the ladder and use it like a makeshift ram. To my astonishment, they stumble upon a poison gland while examining the remains of a dead imp and inquire if they can attach that to the ladder as well. Then they found a wizard who put a spell on that ladder that made it less prone to breaking. The result? The ladder now boasts an impressive arsenal of damage potential. 1d8 piercing damage, supplemented by 1d4 poison damage, and 1d4 bludgeoning damage for each person assisting in its use, factoring in their strength modifier and proficiency bonus. Furthermore, its effective range extends up to 30 feet when fully extended, or 15 feet in its compacted form. Initially, I said that the ladder would break on a roll of 1, However, considering the extra layer of protection now in place, I said that rolling a 1 would instead trigger a death save mode, while 10 or below means the ladder breaks. Anything 11 or higher would mean that the ladder does not break. Ah, that ladder. Oh, that ladder. We further took inspiration from this in some comments on Reddit and expanded the story here at All Things D&D that reads as follows. As the dungeon master, I couldn't believe how a simple ladder had taken on a life of its own in our game. Little did I know that the latter's journey was far from over. The players had unwittingly stumbled upon a relic of great power, and now the world around them was about to change in unexpected ways. Word spread quickly of the legendary ladder, and relic hunters from all corners of the realm began to track the party's every move. These hunters were not to be taken lightly, as they possessed formidable skills and resources. The players found themselves constantly on edge, never knowing when danger might strike. But it wasn't just relic hunters who sought the ladder. News of its unique properties had reached the ears of a powerful creature from another realm. This creature, known as Vortigore, possessed immense wealth and influence, and it saw the latter as a priceless artifact. Vortigore reached out to the party, offering a substantial sum to purchase the latter. However, the king of the realm caught wind of the latter's significance and swore that it would never leave his domain. He saw the latter as a symbol of power and control, and would stop at nothing to ensure it remained within his grasp. The party found themselves caught in a power struggle between Vortigore and the king, each side vying for possession of the latter. As the players grappled with the decision of whether to sell the latter or defy the king, they began to question its true worth. What if it wasn't just a latter? What if it held a greater purpose or hidden potential? Doubt filled their minds as they recalled the latter's extraordinary abilities in combat. Eventually, they made a fateful choice and sold the latter to Vortigore, thinking it was nothing more than a cleverly modified tool. Little did they know the repercussions this decision would have. The moment the latter left their possession, its true nature was revealed. It transformed into a magnificent weapon of immense power, emitting an otherworldly glow. Regret filled the hearts of the players as they realized the grave mistake they had made. They now understood the significance of the latter and its potential to change the world. Determined to right their wrong, they hatched a daring plan to recover the fabled ladder from Vortigore's clutches. They gazed across the tumultuous sea, their destination hidden amongst swirling mist. Undeterred, they sought a legendary seashell said to guide those in need. Scaling a towering lighthouse, they met the hermit Silvara, who demanded a rare century-blooming flower as payment. 
In a perilous forest, they battled guardians and overcame trials to obtain the coveted blossom. Returning to Silvara, they secured a seashell, its melodious tones resonating with ancient magic. The seashell became their compass, its ethereal song guiding them through the treacherous waters. As their ship cleaved the crashing waves, the mist cleared, revealing Vortigore's formidable stronghold atop a jagged cliff. Step by step they went ahead, poised to reclaim the legendary ladder and restore balance to the realm. The stakes were high, the weight of destiny upon their shoulders. Amidst Vortigore's fortress, they would face their greatest challenge yet. The party's hearts beat with anticipation and uncertainty as they readied themselves for the final showdown. The fate of the latter, and the fate of the realm, hinged on their success. With weapons in hand and resolve in their eyes, they pressed forward. As they reached Vortigore's stronghold, a mysterious event occurred. The goddess of balance and justice, Ladaria, descended from the heavens to aid the party. She recognized their bravery and unwavering determination in their quest for the latter. With a wave of her hand, she bestowed a divine blessing upon the players, declaring them the Latter-day Saints. With Ladaria's blessing, the party launched a fierce assault on Vortigore's forces. The battle was fierce and intense, but their determination prevailed. In the end, they reclaimed the fabled ladder and restored it to its rightful place. And so the party's journey continues and the world would never forget the Latter-day Saints. As the Dungeon Master, I couldn't help but laugh at the incredible twists and turns that a simple ladder had brought to our game. What will we do with the ladder next? No idea. I don't even know what this party will do next. Unique magic items and their stories are one of my favorite things about D&D. Here are a few more stories that might inspire some of your own magic items in your games. My party consisted of three players. I, the Dragonborn Barbarian, the Halfling Rogue, and the Magic Item, and Plot Point Hungry Sorcerer slash Warlock. We were all around level 13 or 14 at this point in the campaign, getting ready to defend the town of Leylon from an approaching undead army. Previously, we'd killed a green dragon and found an iron flask in its hoard. Using magic, we determined that there was something in the flask, and the sorcerer lock was very keen to open it as soon as possible. So he did, whilst we were all inside the small magic item shop in Leylon. Inside the flask was a Glabrazoo demon. It thanked him for freeing it, as they usually do, and granted him one wish. Being the magic item hoarder he was, after a brief thought, he wished for a staff of the magi. The demon obliged and produced the staff. Being a demon though, the wish didn't turn out perfectly for him. The sorcerer lock had been obsessed with going to Waterdeep for some reason. So much so that his previous character had run away from the party to go there. His new character was exactly the same, a magic item kleptomaniac, and always wanted everything we found. What we didn't know was that the staff in fact belonged to the Arch Magi of Waterdeep. After a few minutes of him marveling at the magic item, the roof of the shop was torn off, and the Arch Magi took back his staff, and banished the Sorcerer Lock from Waterdeep forever, leaving everyone at the table laughing our heads off at this turn of events. We eventually held back the undead army without the staff, and I think we ended up using a peasant cannon as well. My favorite was the Rhyming Dagger. It was just a simple dagger, but it could shapeshift into any non-living object, within limits, as long as the user could form a rhyme of what it wanted to turn into. What followed was hastily made poems which were always hilarious. Rogue fell down a hole. If I stay down here I'll be sadder, so turn into a ladder. Rogue has to carry some water. Turn into something to carry this melted hail. Yes, turn this dagger to a pail. Rogue is trying to scout out an enemy camp. Those knolls are too far away, I cannot see. A spyglass would help when I climb that tree. I gave my players a bag of communism. When they found it, they figured it was a bag of holding. They've pulled random items from it, including a ham sandwich, after attempting to retrieve something they put inside. One of them reached into the bag, only to find another hand trying to grab something. They haven't tried to pull something from the creepy bag since. The bags of communism are a set of three bags that work like a bag of holding, and look similar although patchworked, except that all three share the same interior dimensional space. Place an item inside and it can be retrieved from any of the three bags. You can see the problem when you only have one of the set. Staff of Merciless Sunshine, a plus three magical weapon. It looks like a big sunflower with a smiley face in the middle. The staff is pure evil though. It speaks in a voice similar to Elmo's, but says things that might come straight out of r slash Bert's trips. It causes anyone who challenges it to experience gut-wrenching fear, with a DC of 15 required to overcome it. It can open a 100-foot portal to hell that will suck anyone and everyone into it. DC 15 dex save to not get sucked in. It will also eat an opponent's heart, and had a chance to gain some of those opponent's powers, which is how it got the portal to hell thing. We all took turns voicing it, and it was hilarious what horribly twisted things we made it say. 
The wielder was oblivious to how evil the staff was and was a little bit controlled by it. He fed it regularly. Magic items are a staple of Dungeons & Dragons. Cursed items and messed up items are a staple of my Dungeons & Dragons games. Share your stories of how your party used an item in an interesting way, or how you cursed your players with a hilariously evil magic item with us in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.